Okay, I'm back again for part three. Okay, um, where was I at? Oh, okay, I needed to do, um, he told me that all I needed to do was to take these capsules twice a day for six months. This, this would, oh, this would, oh, 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 these capsules would definitely fix the problem once and for all. He also explained to me that they would cost around $100 a bottle. Two things went through my mind at this time. First, the cost, and second, the side effects. By this time, I gave this thing called fibroid tumors my undivided attention. I am no longer going on with my life. I have to get rid of these things. A fibroid tumor, it doesn't even sound right. What is a, a fibroid tumor? Thank God that my husband had, had great insurance on his job. All I had to pay for, all I had to pay for, this medicine was one dollar because his insurance paid the rest. Then um, the side effects were negative, but I felt that I had no other choice. He prescribed for me two bottles at a time. I took two pills a day, one in the morning and one at night. I made sure that I took plenty of water, drank plenty of water. My six months went by, and these tumors were supposed to have been shrunk. No more bleeding when I had intercourse. I had very bad cramps when my monthly came on. Okay, I reached my 40th birthday and cramps are getting worse and worse. My periods are longer and longer. The gynecologist put me on Motrin 600 milligrams. That didn't do a lot to, to stop my misery. To tell you the truth, it added to it. Motrin made me sleepy and I was on iron taking it three times a day. Plus I needed a laxative so I could move my bowels. Sometimes I would stay in bed all day, all day long, two and three days at a time, trying to get rid of these ugly cramps. Once in a while, tears would roll down my face. I would take Motrin, toss and turn. I was so glad when my period went off, but it never seemed to go off, so I wasn't glad that much. So I'm going to... um. I'm going to stop here with this and move on to something else. Now, this is a, a dear um, lady that I, um, well, I don't know her, but she really gave me a lot of help. She used to talk to me. Her name was um, Nora Coffey, C-O-F-F-E-Y. She is the founder of HERS, um, the History, Hysterectomy Educational Resources and Services. I just want to put a pitch in for her. Thank you, Miss Coffee. Here's a lot of um, things that comes from estrogen dominance. Um, what happens is when you when there's too much estrogen in our bodies, they say how um, the women of, of of our culture, black culture, African American, or whatever, they have more um, cases of fibroid tumors than any other race. I didn't, that, that didn't face me in the least because I just wanted to get rid of them. Um, how many people have them, I, I, I don't know or why they have them. That, I just was not concerned with that. My concern was getting rid of them so I can get on with my life. And so I went online and I did some studying about the um, estrogen dominance. And it was saying how um, these are the things that come from estrogen dominance. It was uterine cancer, uterine fibroids, weight gain irregular menstrual flow, fluid retention, vaginal dryness, thyroid imbalance, water retention, memory loss, PMS, prostate cancer, thyroid dysfunction, premenopausal, bone loss, fibroid cystic breast, headaches, dry eyes, breast cancer. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So, I mean, it's like, to me, I feel like we all need to be educated on this thing called progesterone because that is definitely what we need in our bodies to balance out the hormones. Um, here is something else I just wanted to read. I had um, got some feedback from some women online. I just want to read one of the um, emails. It says, thanks for the info. I have heard a lot of stories, both con, pro and con. Uh, this lady, her name is um, M.G. Uh, thanks for the information. I heard a lot of stories, both pro and con, regarding fibroids as it pertains to whether or not to have them surgically removed. Right now, they are affecting my way of life. 
When I get my cycle, I am literally fearful of going out and doing things for fear that I will mess up my clothes from the heavy bleeding. I have left home for work, and by the time I arrive in the parking lot, my clothes are messed up and I have to change everything. My life is too full and active for me to be held captive by my body. I'm not having it. Enough is enough. I had an MRI done this morning, and I am going to opt to have the uterine embolization and the, of the arteries that are feeding blood to my fibroid. Because, b believe it or not, I have a male doctor that I've been going to for 15 years, and he is encouraging me not to have a hysterectomy. Typical, typically, doctors don't care one way or the other, um, especially male doctors, but I have been blessed with one that cares. Thanks for replying back, and yes, there are some mean people here in cyberspace. Um, here's my reply uh, back to um, M uh, MG. Please, do not believe that surgery is the only way to deal with fibroids. If you don't deal with me, um, please find another way of dealing with them other than surgery. Also, I really would like to know how you are doing. If you have some time, will you please email me and let me know how you are doing, please. Here's a letter from a dear person who really regrets having surgery. I hope that you have the time to read it, and here it is. Um, the, I read the letter that I, wrote, um, to, I read to y'all earlier, and I think it was the first... Um, I think it's the first, um, first part. I don't really want to read it again for those who've already read it. Um, I don't even want to, it's just a lot of, um, I guess a lot of women just emailing me back and forth about the same problem. Everybody seems to have the same um, talk, everybody, because it's a really a miserable. I have even had men email me about their wives. What could they do to help their wives through this situation? I mean, it's like a really a bad thing. And this is another, some more paperwork that I had from um, going back and forth to the emergency room. And I, I want to talk to you um, about one more, one more thing. I had, I was so despondent and just really began to cry out to God and asking the Lord, please help me because if you don't help me, I know I'm not going to make it. And and I, I just felt, and I just felt led that the Lord had me to go on a seven day fast. Now, when I went on this fast, I was really at my wit's end. I felt like I wasn't going to be here probably anyway. So um, if I was just starved to death or whatever, because I could barely lift my head up because it had gotten that bad. And when I went on a seven-day fast, when I came off the fast, that's when I felt the, um, the leading with the, with the cream. I haven't really knew anything about the cream and until... Um, I went on the fast to go, and I went to the vitamin store. Actually, I didn't have a clue of what I was going to get, what I was going to do. But when I went to the vitamin world, it just seemed to all fall in place, and I just got the cream. I took it home, and I used it like I showed you before. Let me show you again. I took this cream, and I took a little bit of it, put it in the palm of my hand, like that. And this is all I did. That's all you do, or if you want to use it, if you want to try it. And remember that this process did not work overnight. Like I said, five boys don't come overnight. They take time. And once you know, you have it. It, it don't start one day and it's just there. And, it, and it's going to take time for you to get rid of them. So it just give it the time that it needs for you to use the cream. Be very patient. Like I said, I went back to the doctor in four months, and that's when I realized that they had gone. And you could, I mean, just, it's, you got to try something other than surgery. Like I said, surgery was definitely not an option for me. I never thought about whether I was going to do it or whether I should do it. I never pondered it in my mind because it definitely was out of the question because I did not want to get cut. So I did stay in the hospital for five days. And um, they, like I said, I had that um, uterus, um, artery, uterus or whatever, embolization. And, of course, that didn't work. And I just, it was just real bad for me. I had one of the worst cases that I've ever known. So I'm here to say, I know if I can heal, get healed, the Lord heal me, he'll heal you. And if he's no respected person. So I just go go along, you know, as you go and just pray, be patient. And, you know, I just send me all kind of um, messages with whoever you feel like you need to talk to. I'm here for you to talk to. And believe me, you, I understand. All right, so I want to thank you again for listening. And just have a blessed year. And just just keep on doing what you got to do. And don't let fire boy um, tumors hinder your life. 
Again, I want to say thank you. My name is Carol, and if you need to email me, please feel free to do so. Bye-bye.